Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Today on the kitchen table, uh, we're going to be doing, talking about compasses and calibrating the compass um, on your drone. Uh, it's a question that seems to have come up quite a lot. I've been getting a fair few emails about compasses at the moment. It seems to be the hot topic. So we're just going to revisit compass calibration. Um, before we go any further, of course, it's my kitchen table. We must always have a beverage when discussing our drones. It's another early one this morning, so I'm on the coffee. This is some home roasted monsoon Malabar, and it's very nice, so uh, cheers. Oh, very good. Right, compass. Okay, so for those who, um, who need to know quickly, um, calibrated the compass <clears throat> basically just means letting the magnetometer that is in there see the Earth's magnetic field on a couple of, at least a couple of axes of rotation so that it can kind of work out where magnetic north is and sort of therefore starts to know which direction it's pointing in. Um, that's it. Fairly simple. And in fact, DJI has a nice little um, picture of it in their user manual. One axis, two axis, no problem at all. Uh, some drones, by the way, um, obviously read your own instruction manual if you haven't got a, a Phantom. <clears throat> Excuse me, some drones like the 3DR Solo I notice have, have three or even four axes of rotation. You need to do it. Some of them sort of start going diagonally and all sorts of stuff. So read your manual and whatever's good for the compass in yours <clears throat> is what you need to be doing. I think the confusion uh, arises because um, with lots of, as with lots of things in life, there are many different ways to, um, to make that rotation happen. And people are concerned about whether they're doing it the right way or not. Um, so let's just have a little showcase of some of the different methods that I've seen. The duck and cover. The duck and cover. The one-armed bandit. The one-armed bandit. The juggler. The juggler. The hugger. The hugger. The superhero. The superhero. So there we go, a bit of a variety for you there. Um, for your uh, for your interest, uh, my method is sort of like, you know, it's a cross between the hugger and uh, and the superhero um, in that I, um, um, you know, I hold it at eye level where I can see the lights and I go a fairly tight spin. Um, I have kind of done it just in place on a on a surface, if I can see the, uh, purely because in the olden days, I guess the habit I got into was the only reference you had as to whether or not the, uh, the, the calibration was complete was by whether the LEDs changed. Now, of course, with the, uh, with the, with the later generation Phantoms where you can use the app, which will tell you if it, to move it to the next stage, it's not such, a, not such an issue perhaps. Uh, but certainly my, my, my back's far too old to do the duck and cover anymore, uh, but I have seen that. So the bottom line is they all appear to work. Um, so there doesn't seem to be a, thank you, dog. So there doesn't seem to be any issue with whether you keep it a very close rotation or at arm's length, providing you get a full 360 or the magnetometer gets a full 360 view of the Earth's magnetic field lines, that's important. One thing I will just say, of course, is if I was doing it for real, I would not have been calibrating my compass where you saw, right next to the building, all sorts of, you know, um, electrical wiring in the walls. The conservatory has a, has a metallic framework to it all bad stuff. Um, other things that you need to watch out for as well are, you know, uh, personally, I wouldn't do it with the transmitter right next to it. Again, it's a big chunk of stuff there that, that's going to give you potentially some off readings. Um, but the bottom line is, whether you're the sort of person who calibrates every flight, and hands up, I don't calibrate every flight. Um, uh, I tend to calibrate uh, only if I'm going to a location that I haven't flown from before, or if I've done any work to my aircraft, added or removed anything, or had screwdrivers a bit close to the to the compass, or if um, if I think it needs it. And when I say that, what I what I do every every flight, whether I calibrate it or not, is I put this up into about a hover at about ten feet, so it's above eye level, above head height, and and I let go of the sticks and I watch it like a hawk. And if it does its usual thing, which is just look like this in the air. After 30 seconds, I go and fly. If it starts to sort of drift, particularly if it starts to drift in a sort of circular motion like that, that implies that the compass and the GPS are struggling to coordinate themselves, and then you might need to do a calibration. Um, I've just had experiences in the past where I've merrily calibrated my compass, <coughs> excuse me, in a place that actually turned out to be 
just hit the camera in a place that just turned out to be completely inappropriate because of a hidden some hidden metal work that I wasn't aware of um, it wasn't enough to make it come up with an error message but it was enough to just put that little offset in and after about two minutes of flying that kind of motion that you can only see in the hover got worse and worse and I was lucky to be able to wrestle it back um, uh, towards me having to you know really practice my nose in flying skill and flip it out of GPS mode because yeah, so that was an experience that I don't want to repeat. So my personal philosophy is if I have a known locked in good calibration, I'd rather keep that unless I'm flying somewhere completely different miles away. But you do what you, you want to do. The manual says, the DJI manual says, you must calibrate your compass when you are flying in a new location. Uh, whatever your procedure is, keep doing that. But I encourage everybody to do a, um, a hover check um, irrespective. Uh, that was it, really. Really quick look at compass calibration. Um, if anyone has any more questions, drop it down below. Um, I hope you enjoy flying your drones. Many thanks indeed for your time. Um, if, you, uh, if you find the videos useful, then a thumbs up and a subscribe would be really appreciated. And uh, if you want to support the channel, there's some links down in the description how you can do that. And a particular thank you to the, to the channel patrons um, for doing a regular sort of monthly donation and your mugs will be on the way soon, patrons, so cheers.